I'm excited to go over some possibilities with you. So last week we had a recorded video on the cutting and two weeks ago we talked about um, fabric selection and wherever you are in the process, it's totally okay. Um, always time to hop in at any point. Don't feel like you're behind. Um, and some people are also ahead and have finished theirs. Totally okay. This is a work at your own pace um, type of project. I'm here to support you wherever you are at. So it looks like we've got some people coming in. Gonna give everybody just another minute or two to come on in. Um, and so I have the camera set up so that you can't see me today because it's more important that you see um, the different possibilities that we're gonna talk about. And as I mentioned, for those coming in now, oh, Facebook, gotta love the platform. I had this nice big wide shot high up so that you could see um, this entire raw candy and most of these and everything. And then I got um, going live and apparently I can't use those settings in Facebook. Can only use them on my phone. So is what it is. All right, let's get started. One of the easiest, simplest ways and what I did on the cover of Rock Candy is totally scrappy. So that's what you're looking at here. Um, I used, in this case, two of each one, and there is no rhyme or reason to the placement of where they are. Totally scrappy, solid black background. Um, that's what this one is. This one is the same as well, this blue one. Um, there's two of each. Sometimes, depending on what they are, they're so close it takes me a minute to, to find where their match is. Um, but this is just totally scrappy. Throw them down, kind of mix them up. The only rule I really have with scrappy is I, I try not to put the same one next to itself because then it's going to create a different shape. Um, but other than that, no rules. So that's option one, totally scrappy. Okay, the next option that I really like is, and honestly, I like them all, is this semi-planned. Um, so this semi-planned out version, um, I'm gonna try to make sure you can see as much of it as you can in the frame. Um, this semi-planned out version has the center, um, all six the same, so it creates a star. And then I created chevrons. So there, in this one, there is six fabrics each used six times, so, this fabric has these three chevrons, then these three chevrons, these three, these three, and then I made the points with the remaining six. And in this case, I chose one that had a lot of similarity to the background, so it kind of blends into the background, um, but you don't have to do that. So another example of the same layout, different fabrics, is this one, and in this case, the six on the outside are super, super bright and bold, so they really pop from the background. So you can see the difference when they blend in to the background versus when they pop. Both are correct. There's just lots of different possibilities. So here in this one, again, center star, same six. And then I've got my chevrons. And in this case, I also decided to arrange my predominantly yellow patterns um, in this star around the star. Another possibility. So again, this one is six fabrics each used six times, and so is this one six fabrics six times. And this was a fabric that Angela Walters did a number of years ago with Robert Kaufman, and this was like a cheater print that um, came with it that she used to teach people quilting, and I just thought it was really fun. So stuck that on the back. The back is always also a fun um, place to get creative with your rock candy. So don't don't ignore the back. You can You can do some fun stuff there. So those two, all right. Then this one shows you what possibilities you have with two fabrics. This is another two fabric one over here. And in this case, I did a lot of fussy cutting. So we talked about fussy cutting last week in the cutting video. And um, in this case, um, I am from Philadelphia, for those who don't know, and Philadelphia Eagles is our football team. I had some novelty fabric and often novelty fabrics can kind of be overwhelming and the, the scattered of how they print them doesn't always lend itself well to cutting of quilt shapes. So in this case, I fussy cut out the eagle and the word eagles. And then I decided to alternate it because it was a little too much with um, this gray that is very similar to the gray in the logo. And I have, you know, eagle, eagles, eagle, kind of all the way around. And then um, in this one, I just have a yellow and a um, 
white and they really contrast up the border. That's where this one pops. So this one has more contrast in the piece itself. And then they do contrast off the background. This one, these two are closer together, but they pop off the background. And I also, binding is another fun opportunity with this quilt. So in this one, I decided to go with a, a, a zigzag. Um, so that kind of adds some nice fun interest to this one. So another option is this, which is the two colors and using fussy cutting. Okay, moving right along. So this example um, is six fabrics again, each used six times. But in this case, I mean, each of the pizza slices is the same. So when I say the pizza slices, if you've jumped ahead in your pattern, you know that this is, this is our pizza slice. And that's how we assemble our quilt. Oh, loose thread. There we go. And in this case, the center is always this one. And then the next one up is always this one. And then and so forth and so on. So the placement is the same for each wedge. This is really easy when you're piecing because um, you just go to the machine and you make all six exactly the same. And then in this one, I did decide also to do some fussy cutting of the different hands from Tula Pink's Homemade to feature um, the different um, fun motifs that are in there. Um, and some of the other ones are fussy cut as well. We got a spool up here, um, got a pair of scissors here. They're not all fussy cut, some of them are just are what they are but when I had the chance um, depending on what fabric I had left I, I made most of this from scraps from another project this one also shows you a print for the background most of mine are solids and I think that's just because I have a really large stash of solids so when I get the idea to make a rock candy I usually have scraps or whatever fabric for the center but I don't always have a ton of background fabric so I just grab from my solids but that doesn't mean your background has to be solids there are fun things that you can do um, with prints and this this shows that example so again this one is six fabrics each one used six times and each of the pizza slices is identical to the next one okay now this one is um from this is Downton Abbey fabric from Andover from a number of years ago did I write the year on it nope that would have been helpful um this is one of the ones I gave to my mom had to borrow it back <laughs> I will give it back to you mom as soon as we're done filming um, so in this case, it's partially scrappy, partially not. Um, you'll notice that, you know, this print is the same and it's used on the inside and the outside. Um, this print is kind of here and there, but the one thing that I did, if you kind of look at it as the whole picture, it's kind of hard because I can't get the whole thing in it, but I'm trying, is that the center is predominantly dark and it's followed by lighter prints to make this echoey star. And then it's got some darker ones on the outside again. And because of that, and because I used a dark fabric on the outside, these kind of blend in, some of them. Some of them more than others. The purple definitely does, this one. And I'm okay with that. That's a decision that you have to make and, and decide are you cool with that or not. Either way is okay. Uh, Rachel just sent me a message, 2014. So this is this one's, this one's a, a golden oldie. Um, but it just shows you, you know, some of these fabrics, it looks like this fabric I used six times and this fabric six times. The, but then this fabric, I only see three times. And then this fabric, I see one, two, three, four, five times. So I was not consistent with this one with the number of pieces that I cut out. I probably was doing it from scraps. You don't need to um, follow a formula if you don't want to. You can follow a uh, gentle formula of lights and darks. There's so many possibilities. That's one of the reasons I love rock candy so, so very much. Um, so that is another fun one. I keep calling them fun ones because they're all fun. They're all good. Okay, so this one is featuring Lizzie House's um, famous uh, pearl circles, um, pearl, pearl dots, circles. And um, most of them are tonal. This one in the center is the metallic. Um, and what this is, is two different pizza slices. So we have the pizza slice that is lime green in the center with green and red on the outside. And we have three of those slices. And then we have the slice that is um, the metallic in the center with the blue and the black on the outside. And then we have that slice three times as well. So make sure you guys can see that. So this is kind of a modification on the 
homemade one where we had the same fabric for all six slices. Bring that one back for a second. So this is the same fabric for all six slices, where with this one, we're doing two types of um, slices. And yeah, pearl bracelets, that's what it was called. Um, so just a fun twist on this one is this one. Um, I think what I was going for here was I had 12 fabrics and I didn't really want to eliminate any of them. So it was how can I fit as many fabrics as possible, but still have a type of planned look to it. Um, Cause they, they really kind of, um, when I arranged them scrappy, I wasn't as happy. So I wanted a, a planned look of sorts. So there's that one. Okay. Now I have a whole bunch of um, pieces cut to show you that are kind of laid out. So I'm going to see if my stacking method worked. Hopefully not too many pieces fly up here. Um, and we can move things around. Okay, so of course it's not in the frame at all. We'll make that work. All right, give me a second to get this over here. So these are just cut loose pieces. And um, what I wanted to talk about here is how your background fabric selection is just as important as the layout itself that you choose. Um, this is something that often goes overlooked um, by people, the selection of the background. They made a decision in the beginning, they don't wanna change, and that's okay. But I want you to kind of stretch or think about stretching. Um, so. For example, this here is a bunch of leftover solids. And then you can tell like some of them are frayed and they're this, that, some of them already have stitching. They came out from other projects. This is literally a hodgepodge of leftover pieces. These yellow ones are from that yellow and white one. I think some of these pinks might be from that. The blues are from my wedding quilt. There's a hodgepodge here. Now, if I did this on pink, it really creates a wreath and it makes the pink pop and it creates one thing. But if we do it on the blue, it's a totally different feeling. You just focus on the pink in the center and you get this really cool feeling overall for your project. So I'm gonna use this fabric over here to show you if we block out um, and just look at half at a time. That quilt is very different than that quilt and it's just a change of background. That's all it is. So there is lots of um, flexibility here to try things out. And before you go ahead and cut your background, I find it helpful to lay it out on fabric like this. Some people um, will cut the triangles and line them up. That's an option too. But this is even quicker because if I decide, hey, I really don't like this pink or I really don't like this blue, then I didn't waste my fabric. I didn't already cut it into pieces. Um, no fabric is ever really wasted because you can go ahead always and you can use it um, for another project. But one other option is I could go, I could go towards the yellows. Um, so give me a second and I'm going to move a few pieces and show you what it would be like if I put it on yellow. I know you probably can't see at all what I'm doing right now, but I will move it back into the frame in just a second. So this shows us what it would be like on the yellow, which is yet another total variation. Um, it kind of makes the blue and the pink parts appear to be floating um, on the yellow. And this part, even though it's not exactly the same yellow, it kind of fades into the background. So lots of possibilities, whether you go with something that's gonna match, something that's gonna pop, but it just shows you with this one, three different options, same fabrics, so many different um, possibilities. If you have any questions about this one or anything, please go ahead and ask them. And if I'm going in any way um, too fast, um, let me know. I can always snap photos of these after we're done our live and post those if that is helpful to you. Um, so just let me know what, what would uh, help you out and I'm here to provide that. All right, so let's slide that one out of the way and let's see what we have up next. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is a fun one. They're all fun. 
this one I really like. Okay, this is totally scraps. Mostly scraps from Nebula. If you are in Nebula, did Nebula, um, this is just a bunch of diamond scraps cut up. And in this case, what I did to kind of throw a little bit of a curveball is I made my center black to match the background. Um, and what that does is it makes this floating wreath star. Um, I think this could be really cool in holiday colors, whether you do um, Thanksgiving or Christmas. Um, this could be really cool to create a wreath. It might be fun um, if you're into applique to also like applique things on top of that. Um, if anyone does that, I would love, love, love to see a photo. And this changes really quickly if we, um, for instance, instead of having those black ones in the center, if we had more color in the center instead. So I'm just going to lay a couple quick ones to show you how fast this really changes into a different look. Not wrong, not better, not worse, just totally different. Um, so taking that out, it looks more like a traditional rock candy, like on the cover. Um, neither one is wrong. It just creates more possibilities, more options. Um, another thing is you could, um, so I have this on top of a stone rock candy, is you could put the black in a different location. You could put the black in between to highlight the center star and the outer ring. Um, this is why I find it's really helpful sometimes to just cut a bunch of possibilities of diamonds and play with them. Um, sometimes we don't play enough. I think my kids have definitely encouraged me to do that more. I tend to historically be a cautious person and um, have planned out many of my quilts and things on the computer digitally and I, I walk in with an exact plan and my kids have kind of encouraged me to plan less and be a little more free and creative. Um, when we get to one of the last ones, uh, Nate moved some of the pieces around and I think he has a really good eye. So, you know, sometimes it's, it's a good to change it up a little bit. So this is another option like this. I still think I prefer this one with the black and center, but who knows? I think I am going to possibly sew this one together though. I have too many that I have today um, laid out to show you just to sew them all, but we'll see. Rock candy is a fast sew. Okay, so a bunch of my pieces stuck. I was worried this was gonna happen. Do, do, do. Okay. Hold, please. Okay. That one goes there, and there, and there. Okay. So I have a bunch of leftover diamonds from Tula Pink Slow and Steady um, from a project I started and then I wasn't happy with where it was going. So I kind of stashed them away for a rainy day and I've used some of them for some things, but there's still a whole bunch in there. And so that's where these came from. And what I did here is there's three fabrics. This one is used six times. The um, outside one is used 12 times. And then I think this one is 18, maybe. It's three fabrics, uneven amounts of them. So We've been, I've been showing you things that use an even amount of each, three of each, two of each, whatnot. This is an uneven amount of each. But what this really does is by using a strong, bold fabric here is I am highlighting this hollow star. And then I am showing, you know, these fabrics, which are not that small scale. This is kind of more of a medium scale, but it works because of the design. And then the chevrons on the outside kind of work to do the starburst. And this quickly could change if I start adding different pieces. So if I start doing this, instead of seeing that hollow star, now you are seeing a whole bunch of chevrons. And not wrong, not better, not worse, just different. And uh, I love how quickly you can switch things up with rock candy um, by adding simply a few more pieces. So, you know, that's an option. I could get um, creative in the center and have something that's lighter. And if it's lighter in the center, it might draw my attention more and contrast off of the um, blue that I picked for here. So, so many, so many different possibilities 
Um, they really are endless, uh, which is probably why I've made this thing over 20 times because it's just fun and there's, and it's quick and it's fast and there's so many possibilities. Um, so I really still like the, the strong star, but another option is, um, all my chevrons don't have to be the same pink. You know, I could have one chevron be the pink. I could have one chevron be that. I could have another chevron be this green. And what else do I have cut? I have this black one over here. So again, just totally mixes it up because now instead of all of the chevrons being the same fabric, now I've mixed it up and they're all different fabrics. Um, so I think someone just said, I love how you're laying them on top. Yeah. So that, that was actually just a pure, um, uh, convenience of lifting them and showing you, but then it kind of really worked. Um, it's kind of like a giant coloring book. Um, the coloring worksheet is super helpful, especially for overall planning and kind of figuring out your fabrics. But then once you have them cut, there are lots of possibilities that you might not have thought of before you started. And I just don't want you to, um, sleep, sleep on them. Um, so to say, I want you to, um, see these things and know that you just have lots of possibilities and you can kind of play uh, musical chairs to your heart's delight. Um, one thing that I find helpful here is to often take a photo, um, snap a couple on my cell phone, and then I can play, um, uh, not musical chairs, we already played musical chairs. I can take a look at them and when you see things on your phone, um, often zoomed out, you know, you can, you can quickly see, oh, that has enough contrast. Oh, that doesn't have enough contrast. I'm not sure about that. So taking photos, you know, is, is a super easy way to kind of, and you also can use those photos as a way to ask friends for help. You know, a lot of us are sewing by ourselves right now, um, because the world is still a little bit crazy and we're often usually sewing in guilds and groups. I will often take a picture and send a text over to Rachel or to Leslie or to Teresa or to Julie and be like, hey, what do you think? Is this working? Is this not working? Do you like option A better? Do you like option B better? Um, feel free to solicit advice. Also feel free to not take that advice. It is your quilt. Um, so if you don't like what people tell you, it doesn't even matter. Um, and if you don't have a, anybody that you want to text it to, feel free to post it in the Facebook group. I will give you my opinion. Rachel will. There is over a thousand other people that will give you their opinion um, and tell you, I think this works best because of this, not just, I like it. Um, so, you know, we're here to support each other. I love that um, community that we have in the Facebook group. And I love seeing all of the rock candies you guys have been working on because you guys come up with things that I didn't even think of sometimes. So please go ahead and share um, in the group and we can all kind of work on ours together. All right, next up is, doo -doo -doo. Well, most of it's staying down, but not all of it, of course. So this one is the um, ombre one that I um, started showing you guys, I think maybe, week one when we were doing our like fabric selection, I think. Um, so this is from Vanessa Christensen's um, Metallic Ombre. Let me get the fabric to show you. So it is, I have a bunch of this one. So it is one long print that goes from dark to light and then back to dark again. And all of my diamonds here are cut from one fabric. And this just shows you if you have a ombre fabric or something that you can create all of your diamonds or many of your diamonds from one fabrics, one fabric, and it creates so many different possibilities. And in this case, I decided to arrange them with the dark in the middle and then kind of echo it out with a light star and then finish it with um, the medium value. And I'm trying to find the rest of my cut pieces, but... This quickly can change if I put the, some lighter ones in the middle, um, or if I alternate, you know, lighter ones with medium ones. Um, you know, you could go from light to dark, you could just totally go scrappy and mix it up and put them all over the place. There's just really um, a lot of possibility. Um, one of the fun things about um, 
Vanessa's Ombre is that not only does it do the um, light to dark um, thing, is that the dark fabrics have the dots are more close together and then they get a little spread apart and then by the lightest there there's less dots. So that's another thing that you can see the density of the dots change in addition to the background fabric. So really to go from something this dark to something this light in the same fabric, it's pretty cool. Um, so lots of possibilities here with um, the ombre. And said so doing this twice with the same six fabrics, one will be planned and the other will be designed by my seven-year-old grandson. I think that is awesome, Anne. And I look forward to seeing that. It is amazing. Um, kids have an eye for things sometimes that we don't and come up with um, some fun possibilities. Um, so it's always fun to include them when, when we can. Um, so ombre is another option. Okay, let's see if this one's gonna stay. Do, 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 most of them. All right. So this is another one using the um, slow and steady fabrics that I had um, already cut. And in this example, um, I decided to intentionally pick these to blend in with the background and focus on this shape. Now I could go solid white with those as well. That's an option. Um, but I wanted to have like a little bit of interest um, in here. And so I picked a print that kind of blends in without being exact but I'll show you what it would be if I just went like, it's kind of see-through so you're not, but if I just went straight white, you can create different shapes in rock candy by making some of the background um, fabric into your diamonds. Like we talked about earlier with the six in the middle, you can do that here. So this creates kind of like a snowflake um, is what I think of it. As so if you have, um, wintry fabrics, this could be really cool to make um, a snowflake. Um, so again, this is using one, two, three, four fabrics, um, uneven amounts. You know, there's only six of this one, six of the, of the outside one, but there's more of this one and more of this one. Um, but I just think this um, creating different shapes by eliminating parts is, is a fun um, thing. So if we for instance, if we used doo -doo -doo, um, one of the prints from the other one, here it creates totally different feel because now you see all the points and now you um, don't have that snowflake look. This is also fun. Actually, I really like this more than I thought. Um, this pink is working really well as the points of the, the center points of the outer star. I, think I kind of want to make this one, um, but I still want to make a snowflake one too. And this is what happens. Um, you're going to rearrange your fabrics and you're going to come up with more ideas. And um, this is also a great opportunity because yes, we don't all have unlimited time to use photos. So snap a photo of this so that when you decide eventually to sew it, you know, in another way, you remember these fun possibilities so you can come back to it. Um, maybe when you have more free time, when you have more fabric, you could do it in that layout but in a different fabric so you know taking the time to just snap a couple photos is really really fast um and worst case scenario you snapped a photo you never use you delete it off your phone no harm no foul um so you know and if i put this pink in the middle it creates yet another whole different experience i really like that too <laughs> i'm gonna be making rock candy all day hope nobody needs me all the kids are both getting taken care of so you know I have time to play actually I wish I have so many things to do but I might take away a little bit of time to play because play is fun and play is needed um, so again another fun possibility and now I'm really excited to show you um, the one that Nate kind of um, helped play with so I had these fabrics up on my design wall and um, I was missing one and Nate like comes and he goes there's a hole and he picks a fabric and puts it in and he's like I like that and he started talking about rainbows and color wheels and I was asking him which background fabric I should use um of these um of Tula Pink's um new uh Dragon's Breath and Unicorn Poop um solids and Nate said use them all and that was my light bulb like why hadn't I thought about 
um, that use them all. So what I'm doing here is I've got, you know, kind of like my yellowy orange, my green, my lighter blue, my darker blue, my purples, my pinks, and then I am using six different backgrounds. Um, and one other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to add my border um, before I assemble the center so that I have these miters on the outside to continue those six colors kind of bleeding out because um, I just think um, it's too fun to, it's too fun to just stop right here. Um, I mean, that's cool, but I just think it'll be like super cool once it like goes all the way out. Um, so yeah, win, win for the three-year-old coming up with the, the best possible answer. Um, so I hope this has helped you. It looks like Dorothy said, change my original layout after watching this. Thank you so much for all you do. You're welcome, Dorothy. Um, I am glad, um, that you have some new ideas and I can't wait to see what your new layout is. And I hope this has helped, um, the rest of you as well. If you have any questions and you're watching this recorded, go ahead, answer, uh, ask them in the comments and we will go ahead and answer them. Or if you think of something later, go ahead and ask it. Um, Rachel and I are here to help as well as the entire rest of the Facebook group. So I hope you all have a good Thursday and I will be back next week to go over how to sew our rock candy tabletop together.